she felt this little bump, as she always described it, because we were a very long way from it. We were on the port side of the ship, and Glisten was on the starboard side of the ship. And had she been asleep, it wouldn't have wakened her. It didn't waken anybody else in the cabins round about there at all, but she was wide awake. And she felt this bump, and she immediately wakened my father. And he wasn't very pleased about this, because she'd wakened him the night before, and made him go up on deck, because she heard something that she thought was untoward. And that was um, ice flows in the sea bumping against the side of the ship. So when she called him on the Sunday night, uh, she wasn't very pleased about that. And then she wakened me, and she didn't say why, but she said, um, I'm going to dress you, and I said, oh, no, you're not. And we got back into bed. By that time, my father, who'd been up to the boat deck in a lift, which was quite close by our cabin, he'd been up there, and he came back. And all he said to her was, you had better put this thick coat on that I've got on. And she stood up and he put his coat on her. I used to say to her many years afterwards, when he came back, she didn't say to him, what was it? She said, I didn't have to. I didn't know what it was, but I didn't have to ask. I knew this something has been over my head for months, and here it was, a great black cloud. Anyway, my father put another coat on, and he picked me up, wrapped a blanket round me, and we went up onto the boat deck and got there, of course, quite quickly. Well, as you know, and as everyone knows, the tragedy of the Titanic was the fact that she hadn't got enough lifeboats. So it was only the people who were there first that got into a lifeboat, and we were there in plenty of time. The boats weren't even being lowered when we got up onto the deck. And my father went away and spoke to one of the sailors, who came, and he came back and said, oh, we've hit an iceberg. Again, my mother didn't say, oh, have we, or where is <laughs> She just said nothing. And he went away again, and he came back and said, oh, I've spoken to one of the officers, they're going to launch the lifeboats, but you'll all be back on board for breakfast. And so thinking that this was what was going to happen, they started to lower the boats, and my father put my mother and I without any trouble at all. As I say, if we'd still been now in the cabin asleep, we would have got on deck too late. So it is only because my mother had that premonition that I'm able to talk to you today, no doubt about that. He made no attempt to get in himself. He helped other women and children. And, uh, that was it. I never saw him again.